As we approach the 19th anniversary of the tragic event in the Indian Ocean, we bring you, as we do every year, another series of videos dedicated to this event. Those who watch our videos regularly know that India is next up. It was hit by a devastating tsunami approximately 30 minutes after nearby Sri Lanka and approximately 2 hours after the main shock of the coast of Sumatra. In this video, we will show you and explain how and why the tsunami behaved in certain areas, what its height was and what damage it caused in the world's most populous country. So please sit back and let's get to the new video. India is directly in the path of the so-called tsunami produced by the earthquake of the island of Sumatra. The wave was moving in the deep ocean in approximately westerly direction at 500 to 550 miles per hour. After hitting Sri Lanka, the tsunami split into two separate waves that traveled quite differently. The northern wave reached the Indian coast of the state of Andhra Pradesh first, approximately two hours after the main shock. The tsunami struck here in several successive waves, each larger than the previous one. The arrival of the tsunami was not accompanied by an outflow of water from the coast as it was a positive wave. So people were not warned and were surprised by the arrival of the wave. Most of the victims were from the immediate vicinity of the coast. The worst affected was Prakasham district, where 35 deaths were recorded, with the maximum damage in Singri Konda town. The waves in this area reached a maximum height of 7.2 feet and in places flooded the area up to 1 km inland. A total of 612 miles of coastline in Andhra Pradesh state was affected. However, this was only the beginning of the tsunami's rampage in India. The state of Tamil Nadu, which was hit about 15 minutes later, fared much worse. The symbol of the tsunami's rampage in the area was the city of Chennai, where an 8 mile long city beach was completely devastated by the wave. As in Andhra Pradesh, the wave came suddenly and without warning and swept at great speed across the beach. Surprising, unexpected pedestrians. Amateur video taken on the beach showed the tsunami approaching like an ominous dark wall of water, quickly inundating the beach after overflowing and advancing further inland like a raging flood. Vilinkani, a coastal town with a Catholic basilica and a popular pilgrimage site, was also one of the worst affected places in this Indian state. The tsunami hit the church here which was at the time occupied by Malayalam pilgrims, most of whom were from Kilara. Although the rising seawater did not enter the shrine, it swept away hundreds of pilgrims who were on the beach. The tsunami had an even more horrific effect on the town of Karaikal. Here, without any warning, a 33-foot wave suddenly formed and surged with tremendous force about 500 meters from shore. The powerful energy of the overflow scooped up the muddy bottom sediments typical of the area into the tsunami, transforming the wave into a 26-foot height mud flood that devastated the town and claimed 492 lives. The city of Pondicherry was hit by waves of approximately 13 feet high, but the city was not significantly damaged, due to the existence of coastal ramparts and walls. Outside the city, however, the tsunami reached as far as 1.5 miles inland and significantly damaged the local fishing industry. Scientists explain the enormous power of the tsunami in this area by the different bathymetry of the seabed compared to the areas further north. Looking at the map, it can be clearly seen that of Karaikal, there are not the extensive offshore shores of the continental shelf as in the north, but the ocean depth reaches much closer to the coast, which caused the tsunami to lose much less energy here as it rubbed against the shallow bottom for a much shorter amount of time than in more northerly areas. However, further south of Karaikal, the tsunami's power rapidly diminished, not only because of the extensive shoals in the Park Strait that separates India from Sri Lanka, but also because Sri Lanka absorbed most of the energy of the northern branch of the tsunami, which thus disappeared. Now, 
only the southern branch of the tsunami was moving westwards. At first glance, it may appear that it must pass the southernmost areas of India and continue into the depths of the ocean towards Maldives. But it wouldn't be a tsunami if it didn't surprise us again with its behavior. Indeed, as you already know from our previous videos, the island of Sri Lanka served as the perfect catalyst from the diffraction of the southern branch of the tsunami and it not only circled the western coast of Sri Lanka causing devastating damage, but with immeasurable force this diffracted and amplified wave hit the southern part of the state of Tamil Nadu, where the town of Kanyakumari is located. This has become a real symbol of the tsunami hitting the whole of India. Kanyakumari is a popular tourist destination and pilgrimage center in India. Notable tourist spots include the unique sunrises and sunset, and especially the 133-foot high statue of Tamil poet and philosopher Filovalovar and the Vivikant Rock Monument by the coast. The diffraction of the tsunami caused the tsunami to change to a negative type, causing a massive ocean outflow from around the city. Boats sank to the bottom, and the rocky bottom was exposed several hundred meters offshore. Fishermen, unaware that a huge wall was approaching the coast, tried to riot and secured their boats. Before long, the ocean began to slowly return to the shore, the first wave that was a harbinger of a much bigger disaster. Suddenly, a 30-foot-high wall of water appeared on the horizon. A 30-foot high wall of water dramatically crashing into the Vivikant monument and the Filovalovar statue, claiming dozens of lives of people who were unable to escape from the wave's strike. The wave quickly moved on and hit the shore with full force where it swept away the fishermen and their boats. Most of the victims of the tsunami in India were from the state of Tamil Nadu whose death still exceeded 7,500. Most of the people killed were members of the fishing community. The last area to be affected in India was the state of Kerala. The tsunami struck here in two densely populated districts of Alapuza and Kolam, as a result of the aforementioned wave distraction around Sri Lanka. The southernmost district of Filanavapuram, however, escaped damage apparently due to the broad turn of the diffractive waves at the tip of peninsula, which means that the wave defector bypassed the area approximately 4 kilometers offshore. Strong upwelling currents were seen offshore, but virtually no significant manifestation were noted offshore, while a few kilometers to the north the tsunami was killing offshore. Tsunamis really can surprise and it just confirms once again what an erratic phenomenon it is. Further north, the wave was rapidly losing strength and the damage was marginal. The tsunami claimed 16,269 lives in India, similar to the 2011 tsunami in Japan for perspective. The impact on the fishing industry was overwhelming and it was crippled for several years. Today, you will find virtually no trace of the wave. The areas were reconstructed and often shine in newness. What is worrying, however, is apart from a few modifications, no major measures have been taken, such as the construction of the breakwaters, known from Japan, and other elements of PASIC protection. Given the technotic activity of Sumatra, the next wave is only a matter of time. Folks, that's it for today's video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel with a bell. We will also be happy if you support our work by clicking on the heart below and donating any amount. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.